as a leadership engaging in large-scale organizational change, you usually need a powerful impulse to get your team moving. For them, from the outset, the journey and destination may seem daunting and even undesirable. Major changes take major impulses. Also, leadership needs to remain persistent and encouraging when change is difficult. That's part of your job. But do you really need to create a burning platform? Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenue from IMPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. Do you really need to create a burning platform to get your team to start the change journey into a daunting and possibly undesirable future, but also to keep the momentum? 10 p.m. July 6, 1988. The first of four explosions occurs on the Piper Alpha oil rig in the North Sea. Oil condensate. The scale of the blast is immense. The flames from the blaze shoot more than 100 meters in the air. The platform is destroyed. The accident is the result of a succession of failures to follow safety procedures. The platform had been operating successfully for 12 years until that fateful night. Of the platform crew, 165 men die, but 61 survive, barely. The difference between the survivors and the victims is that the survivors jumped in the water. From his hospital bed, Andy Mohan, a superintendent on the rig, told of being awakened by the first explosion and alarms. Badly injured, he escaped from his quarters to the platform edge. Beneath him, oil had surfaced and ignited. Twisted steel and other debris littered the surface of the water. Because of the water's temperature, he knew that he could live a maximum of only 20 minutes if not rescued. Despite all that, Andy jumped more than 30 meters from the platform to the water. When asked why he took that potentially fatal leap, he did not hesitate. He said, it was either jump or fry. He chose possible death over certain death. Andy jumped because he felt he had no choice. The price of staying on the platform was too high. The expression Creating a burning platform comes from the 1993 book Managing at the Speed of Change by Dale Conner. He used the dreadful story as a metaphor in the context of change management to illustrate that the staunch commitment of successful leaders showed toward the change initiative wasn't solely due to their attraction to a new desired future. They also displayed a sense of distress related to their current situation, keeping in mind that maintaining the status quo was much more expensive than the cost of change kept them motivated. Connor didn't see the burning platform catastrophe as a story of disaster. He wrote, To me, it's a tale of courage and tenacity that illustrates the commitment necessary to face the risk and uncertainty inherent in departing from the current state of affairs. And further, people don't have to face a life-threatening situation or organizational insolvency in order to support fundamental change. What is required is a deep level, level of resolve, the determination, fortitude and steadfastness to stop paying what has become or will become an inordinate price for the existing conditions. Over the years, the metaphor has become a meme and with it comes several misconceptions. Here are two of them. 
An organization can only get sufficient commitment to change if it is facing circumstances with catastrophic consequences such as insolvency, crashing economy or stock value, unwanted takeover, failing merger, etc. The other misconception is that leaders should intentionally manipulate information or circumstances to manufacture the appearance of urgency for change, when that's not actually the case. Man, that's pure manipulation. Is this how you want to lead? So where does the story fit? Useful change management methods promote the need to communicate the reason for change before starting the actual change process. For example, in the ad car change management model, create awareness for change. Ditto in Lewin's model at the entry stage. And again, Carter's first step of his change theory is to create a sense of urgency. So in your change communication, your focus on the why is to show that the risk of keeping the status quo is greater than the risk of creating a desired future. Your team needs clarity to make the choice to accept change and have a level of control on the outcome or at least understand it. To provide the facts, then they are more likely to align their opinion to yours. The other usage of the burning platform metaphor is for the leadership to stay the course and sustain the pain of change as they remember what the situation was before the change journey started. At a personal level, individuals won't be willing to start the change or accept the change imposed onto them if their level of dissatisfaction with the current reality is not real and serious enough. All of you good viewers will remember my first Within Walking Distance video. It is called Resisting Your Resistance to Change. The equation to understand the resistance to change is the DVP, where the D stands for dissatisfaction, the V is vision, and P, the plan. A burning platform story may help the team to understand the current reality and increase their dissatisfaction, as well as clarifying where they are going, the vision. Whichever approach you have to communicate the need for change, find ways for your leadership and other stakeholders to internalize the need for change and thus take accountability for the change. Please don't engineer a fake burning platform. Fully understood, it will backfire. It is not a nice story. More than 20% of the survivors had PTSD for the rest of their lives. Some became alcoholics. Most had ongoing pain. Family were deeply affected. Not the kind of change you want to communicate. So let's recap. The Piper Alpha disaster inspired Daryl Connor to use it as a metaphor to communicate in major change projects that, one, even if the current reality is known and the desired future is not, it is preferable to change and there are very clear reasons for it. By knowing the why, affected people can have clarity, increase the level of dissatisfaction with the current reality and gain a level of control on their destiny. And two, change is costly and leaders need to stay the course, keep their commitment for change. Their burning platform can comfort them with the fact that the past situation was untenable. And this is the good quote for this episode. Daryl Connor wrote, Understand that commitment to a major change is always expensive and that you either pay for achieving it or pay for not having it. I've got another burning question for you. As you are down the road of change with your team, is it necessary to burn your bridges? In other words, how do you make sure your organization cannot revert back to its original state? Isn't this beautiful?
if you are one of the first three people able to identify the location of this room, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Just write the location in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at imp.solutions. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to change your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead the change well.